beekeepers facing bankruptcy, farms without food. Desperate beekeepers turn to scientists to solve the mystery of colony collapse disorder before another round of bee losses throws agriculture into a tailspin. Diana Cox Foster of Penn State University has spent years studying bee diseases. In November 2006, she receives a frantic phone call from beekeeper David Hackenberg. Dave Hackenberg called me and said, all my bees are dying, and there were no bees inside the colonies or out on the ground. And he had a few colonies that were still in a state of decline, so we went up and picked them up from him to begin looking at this. Dr. Cox Foster quickly assembles a working group of scientists and bee researchers to investigate the growing epidemic. She enlists the help of top researchers in every field, toxicology, biology, and even human disease. Columbia University's Infectious Disease Lab is the top human pathogen research center in the country. The lab conducts groundbreaking research on human diseases like West Nile virus, SARS, and encephalitis. Dr. Cox Foster convinces the team to apply their expertise to insects for the first time. Diana is very persuasive. What she told me was that there are over 90 crops that depend on bees for pollination. So whereas I typically think of bees only as producers of honey, they're important for nuts and fruits. I was actually quite naive. And I also became intrigued by the notion that something had appeared as an emerging disease. The team begins by testing samples of bees from CCD hives. They analyze the DNA and comb through the results, separating the bee DNA from any pathogens or infectious organisms that might be living inside the bee. And the first question we ask is, is this something which is a piece of bee DNA or is it something that's non-bee DNA? If it's non-bee DNA, then it's a candidate for being an important finding. We're searching for any kind of pathogen that could possibly be causing colony collapse disorder. And if the virus is present, then we'll try to sequence that virus in full to see if it's a new species of an existing virus or whether it's a no an already known virus. The first samples reveal a startling discovery. Bees aren't suffering from one disease, but a staggering number of afflictions. They quickly realize that pinpointing a single culprit won't be easy. We have found a whole potpourri of viruses and bacteria and fungi. Some of them have been in the United States for a long time, but that's not what we're trying to find. We're trying to find something which has been relatively recent in its introduction here and is going to be present only in those colonies that have been rigorously defined as CCD colonies. With such a long list of problems facing the honeybee, sorting through the possible suspects will require a number of creative tactics. Dennis Van Engelsdorp's approach is to open up the bees like a crime scene coroner. He starts by taking samples from his CCD hives. Dennis and his team conduct forensic autopsies on up to 100 bees a day. Right from the beginning, they're stunned by what they discover. We started looking at the guts of the bees, and we started seeing all this really gross pathology, all this different scar tissue, and we realized we didn't know what any of it meant. We found some bees where there were whole pollen grains, so it was obviously not digested, so it was like they just kept eating and eating because they weren't getting any nutrition some where we found all these white packets in their digestive system. So there was just this whole array of things and we had no idea what it meant. The investigations lead to another stunning revelation. Fungi growing in the bee's tissue are similar to samples found in humans with suppressed immune systems. It could be that bees have been weakened by an insect virus similar to AIDS. 
We've talked about this condition being somewhat like AIDS in the sense that it, it seems clear that the immune response has been suppressed in these bees. Whether it's an organism, like a virus, that's causing it, or whether it's uh, different stresses, like a nutritional stress, or whether it's a chemical stress, like the pesticides, that causes this immune, that's what we're still investigating. Pesticides are another key suspect in the CCD investigation. And one country in Europe provides a perfect case study into how bees are affected by these controversial chemicals.